But let me ask, this was so interesting to me. You were raised Muslim and you converted to Christianity. Then you became an Israelite. What was it like being Muslim first? Well, I will say that the type of uh, the, the type of Muslim I was, I was not a, uh, I was more of a, like what they call a creaster. <laughs> so I wasn't a devout Muslim, but my dad was a Muslim. My mom was a Christian. So I actually grew up going to church, to be honest with you. But I wanted to be more like my dad. And right. so it was, and so I was more of a Ramadan Muslim. I was not a, I didn't fi- I didn't pray five times a day. Uh, the only time I did any type of Muslim thing was during the, t- during the month of Ramadan, where you fast d- at, during the day, eat at night. Um, so I can't, but I, that, that's how I identify myself. I wanted oh, to identify see. myself to my dad's uh, religious Why did he stop your mother from taking you to church to be a Christian if he was a Muslim and you wanted to be like him? Why did he stop your mother? Because my, that's just the type of, that's the, that's the agreement they had. Um, my mom, my mom grew up Muslim. And when she, when she came to America, she eventually converted to Christianity and, um, and they didn't have a lot in, you know, in LA now and LA is totally different now, but during the time I was growing up, there wasn't a lot of mosque around. Yeah. I remember the the one yeah. that they have on, um, I don't know where it is, but it's kind of near USC area or whatever. I can't think of the street right now. I remember when they were building that. I remember when they were raising money to build that. Uh, uh, that mosque that you see, that big mosque in Los Angeles. But uh, we didn't have a lot of stuff. I remember my dad taking me to Arabic school to try to learn Arabic. But like I said, there was not a lot of resources. Right. But when it came to Christianity and keeping children out of, you know, gangs and things of that nature, Christians had more of a, a, the resources to, to put children in so that, you know, so it just, my dad just came to a country that just didn't have a, uh, wasn't Muslim friendly at that time. And so what was it like being a Christian? Being a Christian, um, you know, when I first became a Christian, it was great. You know, I thought it was great. I was reading the Bible, but the longer I, the longer I became, a, the longer I was a Christian, the more I saw seeing the, the more I start seeing the hypocrisy in Christianity, because the stuff I was reading wasn't matching what I, what was being preached, what was being lived out. Uh, it seems like when you read the Bible as a patriarch, when you listen to Christians as a matriarch, uh, things revolve around Jesus. In the Christianity, things revolve around a woman and her happiness, happy wife, happy life mentality. It was just a hypocrisy. And um, and obviously, even in my own situation, I, I met head on when I finally, when when the, when the Most High Yah um, revealed to me that I should be keeping the Shabbat. And I didn't think it was a big deal. I'm like, hey, what's the Shabbat? It's the Sabbath. Instead of doing Sunday, we're just going to do Saturday or Friday, even the Saturday. I didn't think it was a big deal. And it's probably the thing that just, that's 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 the number one thing what destroyed my uh, my first marriage. So when you were when, when you were a Christian, you judge God based on the Christians? No, no. I, that's the first thing. That's the first thing I told myself not to do because I remember when I was when I was a Muslim, um, challenging. I used to debate with Christians when I was a Muslim. So when I was in high school, college, I was a Muslim. I identified myself as a Muslim. And I used to debate with Christians. And I used to poke holes in their face. Well, how is this and what? And they never could answer any of my questions. And so I always thought like, man, my, and my dad told me just ask one question of a Christian and watch. And that's what I used to ask. I say, okay, if you, what was the question I used to ask? I said, um, I said, if you were a Christian, um, I don't even know what I used to ask. I used to ask a question that would stump them. You know, it was a question that went, and they couldn't answer the question. They said, let me get back to you or this or that. And they never could get back to me. And I always just felt like, whew, man. That, but then finally I did meet somebody that uh, actually read their Bible. And I asked him that question. He said, if you sit down, I will show you. I said, show me where Jesus Christ said he's God. That's the question. I said, show me where Jesus Christ said he's God. And no one can answer that question. For years, no one can answer that question. And finally I met a guy my rookie year with the Green Bay Packers, he actually sat down, told me to shut up, sit down. It was a short white guy, you know, you want to, for description purposes. And I remember sitting down and he was showing me something in the Bible. I wasn't prepared to go to the next round. I'm just used to just knocking people out the first round. Right. And it caused me to now go home. I said, never again will that happen. I went home that day and I said, I'm not going to take my dad's argument anymore. I'm going to read the Bible myself and I'm going to prove it wrong. I'm going to show Christians why they're wrong. And I started in the old Testament 
because I because a lot of Christians at that time during my time uh, uh, debating, they always discouraged me from reading the Old Testament. They say read the New Testament. So I said, man, there's some dirt. There's some dirt in the Old Testament. So I started in Genesis. I didn't know where to start. Started in Genesis. And it was there that I realized that I was a sinner. It was there that I realized that that I did not deserve to go to heaven. Because in, in Islam, you know, your works, if you do a lot of good and, 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 and I thought I was good, but when I was reading the Bible, literally my good was coming down and all my iniquity was being exposed just by reading the word. And well, that's me, what I accepted Jesus Christ as my master and savior. Okay. And so when I converted, that's why I said that I am not going to judge Christianity based off of Christians, so-called Christians. I'm going to judge it based off of the word. Was your and mother was, a perfect example of a Christian? I would not say so. She was not? I would not say so. No, she was not. And then you became an Israelite. What is an Israelite? The same thing that Jacob was. Uh, the same thing. Oh, Jacob was an Israelite. He, he started the Israelite. But the same thing as uh, um, Jesus, uh, uh, Paul. Uh, all the people, the, the patriarchs. So, just, uh, I'm, so what I'm is that like, exactly? In short, because of time, what is it? Um, it's the same thing as you. You probably identify as being an American. I'm. I'm. I'm an Israelite. Uh, I'm. I'm from the. I'm from the line of Yehuda. So that's. I believe I'm. I'm, I'm from one of those lineage, and 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 that makes me a an Israelite. Why didn't you leave the Muslim religion? I left Muslim because the Bible showed me that Muslim was not the right way. What did it say? In what way is not the right way? In, in Genesis, it talks about uh, uh, um, you sin from the beginning, you know, and from a childhood. And, and, and after the flood, he says, never again will I destroy the earth because of men, because their heart is wicked above all things. And I realized that my heart was wicked. And once I realized that was wicked, I all of a sudden realized that I needed Jesus. I need because Christianity never showed me why I needed Jesus. Right. But, when it was, but it was in the Old Testament that I recognized that I needed Jesus, and so I I surrendered my I surrendered my life to Him. So, and so the and Muslims say good. that uh, you don't sin, is that right? No, they don't say that. Oh. No, they don't say that. They don't. They don't even practice. They don't even believe that themselves. No. Oh, okay. They, do they believe you do sin? They believe, yes, they do believe that, that you can sin. Yes. And so real fast, what is exactly is an Israelite? I, I, it's, it's Israelites are people who derive from Israel who was once called Jacob before his name changed. Oh, so, so an Israelite, so ahead. that's what an, Israel, an Israelite is just a, it's a lineage. I come from the line of, uh, 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 from Jacob. I mean, from, you got Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, who became Israel. So I come from that lineage. And so uh, is it the black people who think they're the first Jews or something? Original Jews or first Jews or something like that? I, 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 come, from, I come from Jacob. But I'm just see. trying to, uh, because I've heard of this a lot, but is this the, it, the blacks who think that they're the first Jews or something like that? When you say think of, that's like saying that I think, would, it, would you say that I think that I'm a Baja B. Miller? Would you would you question if I told you I'm a Baja B. No, I'm just trying to understand what is it is, is is that the same group that they that they are the Jews? It's the same thing that you read in your Bible: Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, who became Israel. That group. So um, I'm, I'm from the line of I'm from the line of Jacob. And so, do you have perfect peace? I have perfect peace that passes all understanding. But you could not get that as a Christian. Hell no. Okay. <laughs> so I got to ask you, the time is going by so fast. You belong to, Israel, you're an Israelite, so you belong to Straightway Truth Ministry. Yes, yeah, Straightway Truth Ministry led by uh, Pastor Charles Dow Jr., an amazing pastor uh, who literally couldn't do what most pastors could do for me back in my days when I was in Christianity. Most, most pastors felt like they couldn't help me because I had money. I was famous. And a uh, pastor pretty much treated me and says, hey, I don't have uh, silver and gold, but what I do have is uh, the gospel. And, and he helped me in ways that uh, uh, is just amazing. I'm, I'm indebted to him. I thank Yah for a uh, pastor. He's truly a Jeremiah 315 pastor. And I, I think you should interview him because he's, uh, he's, uh, he's, uh, he's a wonderful man. When does you became a community uh, head with straightway, what's a community head? Well, uh, we have we have an assembly here in Wisconsin. Here in Wisconsin, 
Uh, um, I am the, I represent Straightway Truth Ministry. It's called Straightway Praise Land, um, but I'm still underneath the umbrella of uh, Pastor Dow with Straightway Truth Ministry. And not every assembly have this, but our assembly is a community. So I live with other people. We live according to Acts 2 and 4, where everybody has everything in common. And I'm the head of that oh. community. So, yeah. So, so everybody in your community are Israelites. Yes. And, um, and, and, and they are not black too. So just to let you know. <laughs> do you believe as an Israelite, you believe that a man can have more than one wife? Absolutely. Uh, our ancestors had more than one wife, Abraham, Moshe, Moses, uh, and, Jacob. And so do you have more than one? I know you guys don't believe in getting married. So the woman just come here, right? No, 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 no. <laughs> so like, like, like I, I would say that I personally have two lawful wife and one legal ex-wife. Right. And uh, yeah, so my, my so out of those two, one of them is a legal legally we had divorced, but I never gave her a bill of divorce. So she's still yeah. my my woman, but she's committing adultery. I want to get to that. So you, right now you have two Israelites. I mean two yeah, Israelite wives living with you. I don't have two Israelites. <laughs> I have one Israelite wife and I have one that's gone rogue. <laughs> one Israelite wife, that, that's the one that you divorced? No, that's the heathen. That's the, oh, you uh, had two Israelite wives and then one of them left as well? No, 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 no. I had a wife in Christianity. Right. And it's, when I started keeping the Shabbat, she departed. Right. And she legally divorced me. Right. And how many Israelite wives do you have right now? I only have one. Do you want more? Absolutely. I'm trying to have 94 children, of course. Whoa. How old are you? I'm 43. Well, you better get busy, man. What the? Hey, that's, that, that's why you need more women. <laughs> <laughs> it says be fruitful and multiply. <laughs> and so are you? Are they going to all live with you? Absolutely. All I the mean, women going to live in the same house? They don't have to live in the same, they'll live in the same uh, land. They'll live on the same land as me. because. Oh, you know, I see. They, yeah, yeah. So, so they'll, they'll live in the same, same community and you just go house to house satisfying them. Or they can come to my 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 room, my house, and, and, and I'll so, satisfy them too. Oh, amazing. No wonder yeah. you're yeah. Israelite. No, I'm <laughs> <laughs> Actually, my dad, my mother, and my father both grew up in polygynous homes. So Whoa. it's part of my heritage, yeah. Do you ever get tired of sex? You just don't want to have it no more? <laughs> I, you don't only really have one woman that I'm living with right now. But yeah, I, I am I don't I don't live to have sex, but I mean it's 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 amazing when you get you when you do it, but I don't I'm about my father's business, but that's not that's not that's not why a man like for me, that's not why I want women. I do want to have children. I did have eight. I I'm about to gonna say in your first marriage, the one that you divorced with. That mm -hmm. divorced you. You had eight kids with her. How many boys and how many girls? Actually, I had. I didn't have kids. Kids are goats, but I know what you mean. But I had seven sons <laughs> and one daughter with my uh, my first wife, and um, and so I don't have contact with them. I haven't talked to them in three years because the Christian pastors, f several of them in this area that I donated millions of dollars to, told her to leave me uh, because I wanted to keep the Shabbat. Christian pastors. I mean, this is. This was on a national level, from Focus on the Family to uh, to Rody Bakum to uh, you name it. I mean, they told her to leave me just because I wouldn't stop keeping the Shabbat. And so, when you lose a whole generation, and you know, for me, you have to understand my heritage. Yeah. We believe on having children. We believe in being fruitful, multiply. We believe in training them up in the way they should go. So, when you lose that, for me, being forty three, I started when I was twenty four. Uh, I'm forty three now. I'm not going to wait sixteen years to try to produce that. So the only thing that makes sense is polygyny so what that the? I can, because I want to leave a righteous seed so that I can train them up in the way she goes so they can train the next generation and they're, and they're living for Jesus. So you don't see your kids at all? Uh, I do not. I don't see my sons and daughter at all. No. And how is that for you personally, not being able to see them? Um, I, I'm, I'm used to it now. I've gotten used to it. It was not easy in the beginning. It was very hard, very hard uh, to let them go. But uh, once again, the only way that I can see my sons and my daughter will require me to denounce Jesus Christ because that's what Christians in this area in Green Bay, a whole bunch of white folks, that's what they require me to do. I have to be willing to bow my knees to a man in black robe or a woman in black robes. I got to be willing to bow my knees to a Christian 
bona fide respected Christian in this community and, and, and bow down to her and get her permission to see my sons and daughter. And I, I can't do it because I only, yeah. only serve one. And that's Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus the Christ. And so it wasn't in court that said you can't see your children. It was the preachers who told you that? It's just by her action. She's the one that, she's the petitioner. She petitioned the court. Oh, okay. And so the way the system is set up, it sets you up to acquiesce and capitulate to a woman. And I am not going to acquiesce and capitulate to any woman. Oh. To, even if it means to see my seed. I, I, Jesus says to be my disciples, you have to hate your mother, your father, your brother, your sister, your wife, and your children and your life. And so I just can't do it. So for me to do it will require me to submit to her, and I can't do it. This guy that's over oh, the Lord. Israelite ministry where you are now, you say he's over you, right? He, 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 he's over me, yes. So what is it like to submit to a man? <laughs> it's normal. I, I played football. <laughs> I, had, I, I submitted to head coaches, my father, then head coaches, my whole my whole life, and this is the first time I get to submit to a righteous man. But well, why man why God. not so, submit to God and submit to no man? I follow Pastor Charles Dow Jr. as he follows Christ. But well, why don't you follow Christ and not follow him? Because God is our God, not any human being. And as an adult man, why don't you? Because the same God that's showing him would show you. Why do you need to be under him to know God? Because Yah, Yah led me to Pastor Dow. Yah led him. But led not for you to, to be him. under him, though. That's not true. You don't know that. I mean, um, Paul had people follow him. Um, so Pastor Dow has been doing this for over 30 years. 30 years he's been in this truth. I'm just, I've been doing this for four years. And everything that I know and learn has come from that man. So for me to... Uh, to abandon him and to not submit to him. He's the well, one I'm not that telling you not to work him. with him, but the same God that is showing him, why can't that same God direct you? Why do you have to go to another man rather than, and I understand that he probably, it sounded like he was a good example, so you went to him and he was able to help you. But you're when, not when the supposed pastors wouldn't help me. You're not supposed to be under any man. You're an adult and, and you're the son of God, right? So why can't your father, God, show you why does he have to go through another man to show you? Once you find God, why do you need to? You can work with him but not have him over you. You shouldn't have anyone ahead of you but God. Well, the way I look at it is in my own free will, I choose to submit myself to Straightway Truth Ministry and the person that's leading as Pastor Dow. I don't have to, but I want to. And I and, and it's been a joy. It's been the greatest thing. It's been the greatest thing that I've ever done is to be able to be a part of a ministry that really practice what they preach. What and would so, happen if you if you had no man over you but God? What do you think would happen to you if God was your head? Yeah, is my head. He, not, he, not only that preacher. It, that's like saying that is that that's like saying to a wife. That won't you just submit straight to Jesus? No, well, the a wife should week. submit to her husband because exactly. she came but, from but, the but, man. I know, but if she submits to me, she is submitting to Jesus. So as I submit to Pastor Dow, I am submitting to Jesus. So I'm so sorry, man. Obey, but I, obey those who rule over you. You should know that. 